Hey everyone, how are you doing? You have Mike here, and today we're taking a look at the Migro Array. Uh, so a couple weeks back, Shane from Migro had reached out to us, uh, told us that he kind of liked what we were doing with our channel. Um, we, we do kind of have similar content, uh, so he had asked if I was interested in uh, in taking a look at his Migro Array. Uh, I was pretty stoked about that because we're just a small channel. Uh, he's much larger than we are, uh, so I was kind of happy to take a look at the light and uh, to pass my opinion along to you guys. Uh, so this here is the Migro Array, guys. This here is the 240 watt version of this light. Um, they do have a couple of more uh, versions as well. You can get the 8 bar version, which is a 480 watt. Um, that's going to be more suited for a 4x4, where this here is more suited for a 4x2 flowering. Um, it also has a 720 watt for a uh, 5x5 tent, and that would be a uh, 12 bar setup and uh, 720 watts. Now, they also have a new one that they're just launching. It is a 3-bar, three 3x3 three three coverage setup um, using 270 watts. So they got some really cool stuff on, uh, coming um, and, and just really cool products that they already have out. So uh, these lights here are using the Samsung LM301B uh, top shelf diodes. Um, and all these lights, there's basically two choices. You can either get the 3500K uh, version of these lights or you get the 3500k with the 660 osram uh, chips in here and that's what we have in uh, here now when you use the light with the 660 osram it also is going to uh, raise up the efficiency of the light um, and that is why they went uh, with that route so for drivers they are using a uh, micro branded driver it is a zohenin uh, driver that has been rebranded over to Migro. Uh, the driver does have a dimmer potentiometer on it. You can take it from, I believe, 20% all the way up to 100%. So it is a nice little driver that comes with the light. So with the uh, assembly of this light, it was really simple. In fact, I can even do a little bit of it right now for you. Um, basically, all you're doing is taking this end, you're putting this into here, and uh, it just sits down beautifully, just like that. Very simple uh, installation. The hardest part of the installing uh, this whole entire light was probably getting out of the box because it was packed in there really, really well. Um, and it probably took them about 10 minutes to get the light actually put into the box. Um, so one thing you're going to notice here is uh, it does hang by the hooks itself, by the wires itself, um, which is pretty cool. It's, it's, once again, just another way to keep it really simple. Uh, these cords here have a breaking strength, or I'm not even going to say breaking strength, but they have been tested uh, up to 44 pounds or uh, 20 kilograms. Uh, this light here only weighs, I think, 11 pounds, so you're nowhere near um, the tension where basically it's going to break. Now, uh, even at 44 pounds or 20 kilograms, it didn't break. It was only slightly starting to stretch, um, so I imagine it would be uh, probably about 60 pounds or maybe even more before it actually totally broke. Uh, so, like I said, this here is going to be totally fine for the, uh, for the use that it has for it. So I'm just going to turn off the light here just for a second, and we're going to uh, take a closer look here. So we do take over. You can see here that there is a little bit of shine on the board. Uh, this here is going to be an acrylic waterproof coating. Uh, so this here, as well as all of the connections, the connections here, um, as well as uh, on this 3.5 meter cord, the connections here are waterproof as well. And I will try to pull out the adapter here so we can see it. But once again, a waterproof adapter here as well. So the only thing we really have to do now is test the light. So what we're gonna do is we're going to par test the light. We're going to take the light and uh, we're gonna get some electrical voltage coming from the wall to find out how much wattage it's running. Um, and we're also going to check the temperature that the light's running at with it running for several hours. So let's get into the testing and then we'll come back and we'll talk about all the results that we have. Let's get at it.
All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the testing. Uh, so let's take a look at the results that we have here. Uh, so let's take a look at the six inch par map. We were getting all the way up to a uh, to 1,033 up here. Uh, pretty, some pretty high numbers, a pretty good even coverage. Uh, as you guys can tell, it goes from one end all the way to the other. Uh, even the corners had some pretty decent results. Uh, six inch hang height. I thought that was going to actually be maybe a little bit uh, worse than what it was. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be actually as good as it was uh, at six inches just because of how far the bars are apart. Uh, but it uh, totally surprised me. Uh, so the average uh, par uh, at this level here uh, was 771. So let's take a look at the uh, eight inch. That's also going to be uh, 20 centimeters for, for the rest of the world here. Uh, so we actually had an average par of about 700, but you can still see it was up into the high 800s here, uh, mostly way through the center, uh, even up to the 900 uh, mark, which is is basically you're, you're good for flower here. So from the 6 to 8 inches definitely would be uh, flowering territory. Um, and to say that, uh, actually, if we take a look even at the 12 inch, uh, we were still getting, you know, 700 and some parts. Uh, you probably would want a little bit higher for flower, but... You know, even that's going to show that even down about a foot, uh, your plant would still be getting decent enough lights to produce some decent buds even down a little bit lower. Uh, so you can get away with uh, with growing a you know a fairly decent plant uh, under these lights, uh, which is great. So let's take a look at the uh, micro mold the jewel. Now for the six inch test, uh, it came back at uh, two point four six, which is phenomenal. Um, we'll go to the eight inch was 2.2, uh, 2.26 and the, at the 12 inch it was 2.06. Uh, so phenomenal, even at, even at 12 inches, uh, 2.06 that's, that's still great. Uh, so, um, I did get all these, uh, the, the math here, I did send it over to Shane to get him to double check it as well. Um, turns out that, you know, this is, it is what it is guys. This is some pretty, uh, this is some pretty awesome light. Uh, the voltage getting uh, pulled from the wall was 225 uh, watts or 225 watts. Uh, and uh, yeah, it just turned out to be a great, uh, great light for testing uh, power wise. Uh, so the uh, temperature wise of the light, the uh, light tested at uh, 50 degrees Celsius at the top, uh, which is, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, considering some of the lights that we've tested were, were a lot hotter than this. Uh, 50 in, uh, 50 degrees Celsius here, uh, 57 on the bottom. Um, I also note when I tested that it was sitting at six inches. So it was probably getting a little bit of reflect, reflective heat coming off of the, uh, the mylar at the bottom. Uh, so that probably increased the temperature maybe just a little bit. Um, but 57 is still definitely reasonable. The driver was 56 degrees. That's also very reasonable. Um, Temperature wise, the, the light ran really great. Uh, that's, I guess, the perks of having a light actually built by an engineer. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so let's basically get, I, I, I do have one suggestion. Um, when it comes with the with the driver and how to hang the driver, um, I'm, I'm a little bit kind of puzzled that uh, I'm not really sure how to go about hanging my driver. Cause I know uh, one thing that Shane is big on is, uh, is getting this heat from the driver out of the tent. There's no point in having that in there. Uh, and I was thinking, yes, possibly a good thing to do would maybe to uh, get some sort of a board and mount this to the board um, outside of my tent. And uh, the only problem is, is there's no real bracket or anything in order to mount this to. Um, they're recommending you have about an inch uh, of clearance so air can pass behind. Uh, once again, we don't really have a bracket or a mount for that inch. Uh, so maybe possibly that's something that uh, we can look at in the future, Shane can look at in the future, maybe add it in, or maybe just put a uh, accessory part that you wanted to uh, to purchase separately on the website or something. Uh, but just some sort of bracket uh, to mount the uh, the driver. That's my uh, that's my only real suggestion that I have. Other than that, I really do like the light, um, and uh, I'm going to use this myself in my personal uh, grow. Uh, so in a uh, maybe in a month or two, we're going to have a uh, a plant growing under this light here. So uh, we would really like to get uh, Shane on the channel. 
Um, one thing that would be really cool is if we can get on and have uh, some of you guys ask him some questions. So if you guys have any questions you would like to ask Shane, leave them in the comments down below and uh, we will try to get them all in, uh, or at least as many as we can into the, into the video for you. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Take care.